final theory chapter, chapter looks at how we can explain group differences in delinquency. So the delinquency rate. Characteristics of high crime communities include economic deprivation, residential instability, people frequently move in and out, family disruption, and high percentage of black and Latino residents. Now here, the association between race, ethnicity, and community crime rates is due to third variables, things like economic deprivation, residential instability, and family disruption. So poor blacks are more likely than poor whites to live in these types of communities. So it's not really a function of race and ethnicity. So there's been an increase in the number of high poverty communities between 1970 and 1990. This has to do with the migration of working and middle class African Americans to more affluent communities. Government housing policies place public housing projects in poor inner city communities and major changes in the economy. There was a decline in low skilled jobs that paid a decent wage with a lot of manufacturing jobs moving to suburban areas or overseas. Those jobs were replaced with low skilled service sector jobs that don't pay well. There's been a 24% decrease in the number of people living in these communities from 1990 to 2000. Part of this is due to a strong economy in the 90s and federal housing policies encourage what's called now mixed income housing. There is concern though, we don't know if this trend will continue. So why are deprived communities higher in crime? Maybe they attract a select crime prone individual or maybe the characteristics of that community cause individuals to engage in crime. So thinking about theories, these are communities that are likely higher in strain. There's a lot of blockage towards achieving positively held goals, less access to jobs, and less ability to achieve social status. There's a lot more family disruption, school problems, victimization and abuse, co uh, combined with fewer legitimate coping resources and therefore an increase in anger. These communities may be lower in control. They may be less effective with direct control less likely to provide juveniles with a stake in conformity, less likely to condemn bad behavior. Reasons for this include trouble finding decent work, so they don't necessarily have skills and resources necessary to assist others in the community. In these um, neighborhoods that don't have a lot of residential stability, they're less likely to have close ties to their neighbors and communities and to form community organizations. And finally, we might see more social learning of crime. Delinquent groups are more likely to form and those groups are more likely to develop beliefs favorable to delinquency. So when we look at community crime rates, the dependent variable are economic deprivation, residential instability, and family disruption. These increase crime rates. The increase in crime rates affects other things. Businesses and residents move out, property values fall, poorer folks move into the community, and then we see the cycle happen all over again. A reduction in control, increase in social learning, and increase in strain. So there's a reciprocal relationship here between crime rates and community characteristics. They both influence each other. So let's kind of go through the over the leading theories of delinquency. Remember that strain theory talks about angry um, and frustrated juveniles who are angry and frustrated because of problems or strains and they can't cope through legal channels. Social learning theory believes delinquency is desirable or justifiable response to particular situations. Control theory talks about how we're already motivated towards delinquent behavior. And labeling theory talks about being branded bad and mistreated by others. Combining these theories provides a more complete explanation of delinquency. 